Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I got my DIY deer head pattern done. It's got a pattern on the inside that's built just like these. So the pattern itself creates all the shapes for you. If you want to make one of your own, then you can find the pattern on my website at UltimatePaperMache.com slash DIY deer head. So go ahead and check that out, but I, I want to show you how I made it first. It turned out to be a really easy project, although it, it made me a little nervous because of those antlers. I kind of put it off for a long time because I thought that was going to be really hard. It turns out it wasn't hard at all. So let me show you how this was done. And I want to start with the antlers. There's a mark on the pattern that shows you where the antlers go. And there's a little triangular piece that goes behind them. And the reason for that is to put the antler so that it's starting at exactly the right angle. And there's a little tab on the bottom of the antlers that you just glue on there. After that, you curve it up the way you want to with the crumpled aluminum foil. That part is really easy. The things to uh, pay really close attention to is the fact that you want it crumpled really, really tight. You want it as close to solid aluminum as you can get it because you want a really, really solid antler. Um, as a matter of fact, by the time you're done, it should be solid enough. Even before any paper mache or anything else is put on it, you want to be able to pick it up by that antler and know that it's going to stay there. It's not bending anymore. You've already got it in the shape you want. The other thing to think about is that you want to buy the cheapest aluminum foil you can get. It actually works better because it's lighter and it's easier to crumple up into shapes. And the last thing you want to do is make sure that you find some photographs of uh, deer either in a book or out online and keep it in front of you. So every single deer that you look at has antlers that are shaped just a little bit different. They're not curled up quite the same way. Once the foil is on there tight enough, you'll be able to bend it into the shape you want, then continue adding more foil. You don't want to go beyond the edges of the pattern, but that'll give you an idea how thick you want it and make sure that you just press it on really, really tight. And then it's going to be really strong. Once the aluminum foil is on the antlers, there's a little few more things that you're going to be sculpting with aluminum foil. That's right around the ears. They've got quite a lot of fluff on the inside of the ear, so go ahead and put some aluminum foil in there. I put just a small amount of aluminum foil right around the, the top and the outside of his nostrils. That gave it a really nice look to it. Very realistic without having to bend the cardboard in that particular shape. That was just so much easier to do it with the foil. And I also put some aluminum foil around the eye to give that uh, definition of the eyelids, both the top and the bottom eyelids. All of that aluminum foil and the aluminum foil on the antlers is covered up with masking tape before you start adding your paper mache. I covered my deer head with paper mache, two different kinds. The antlers, I felt it was easier to just wrap it with paper strips and paste and just put two layers on there. That was really easy, although it didn't come out real smooth. I had to smooth it off with some drywall joint compound like I showed you how to do in a different video. And it works just as well for paper strips and paste as it does for paper mache clay. So I'll put a link to that so that you can see how to make paper mache smooth without sanding it. And then for the head, I used the paper mache clay and painted it, obviously. I'll, I'll show you how I did that in this video. When the paper mache was dry, I sprayed it with a primer. I could have used acrylic gesso, but with these antlers, uh, I, I actually tried it and it was just taking me so long. I just switched over to the spray paint and it was so much easier. And then I had to decide how to paint it. I looked around online to see how other people were doing it because there are a lot of deer heads. They're really popular right now, the faux taxidermy deer heads. So I wanted to see how other people were doing it. And I couldn't find any that are actually painted to look like a deer. I think I am um, being kind of a maverick almost <laughs> doing it this way, but I can kind of understand why. Uh, when you go out to, um, I think the most popular ones are made by the White Faux Taxidermy Company, and they're all just spray painted white or black. And that does actually look really cool. Right after I had the spray primer on mine and it was white, I put him up next to the rest of them up here just to see if it would work for me, and it, it just didn't 
work here. It would work really nicely out of my living room, but it just wouldn't work right here. The Near and Dear Company, they've got a lot of faux taxidermy deer heads, and they've got some that have really interesting geometric designs painted on them. Um, they've got the, you know, there's just the white and black ones too, but they also have one that is bronzed. Uh, a bronze coating is really easy to do and really was stunning. I might actually make another one of these for my living room and it really really looked nice i've got a painting that it would be just perfect right next to but for this one i decided i wanted it to look natural so that it would fit in with the other ones i have back here now i do understand why the mass-produced deer heads are not hand painted like this it would just be too expensive for them to hire somebody to do it as a matter of fact right after i got my giraffe done our friend mr shellbot sent me a link to uh, a website that had a hand-painted giraffe on it that looked really similar to this one standing on a shelf and just the neck and the head and it was all hand-painted they were charging seven hundred dollars for it which i thought was totally fair because what you essentially got is a original painting on a three-dimensional canvas but i'm actually not in the income bracket where i can buy a whole lot of uh of original art if i didn't have professional artists in the family and if i wasn't doing it myself i wouldn't have any original art in my house at all because it just gets too darn expensive but i can't afford a 12 dollar pattern some paper mache and the time to go ahead and paint it myself so that's what i did and i got a little bit carried away so it took me a lot longer <laughs> than it probably would have normally i'm going to blame my daughter on that because she talked me into buying this brush it's called a I'll hold it up here close it's called a graining brush I'm gonna get my cat off of there because he's gonna go after the lion's mane okay back to our regularly scheduled program <laughs> the, the raffia on that mane just drives my cat nuts he just loves it um, Anyway, I was talking about this brush, and because it's got those little hairs that stick out beyond the rest of them, you can do like seven or eight fur marks in one swoop. And when I was looking really closely at deer photographs, even though from the distance they look like they're all tan, but when you look up really close, they've got a dozen different colors in the fur. So I decided since I had the brush, I would get a little carried away and I started adding fur. Um, you obviously would not have to do that. The eyes were really easy because deer eyes are so dark, they look almost black in photographs. So I just darkened some burnt umber with just a touch of ultramarine blue, added a little touch of blue and white for the reflection, and the eyes were done. That was really easy. For the antlers, I did something that I'm, I'm not entirely sure if it worked. Um, it was kind of fun. But antlers, when you look at them, they've got kind of stripes that are, they're actually like carved into the, the antler itself. I mean, it would be carved in if we were making them. And I could have sculpted stripes on the antlers if I wanted to, but that, that would be kind of a lot of work and I didn't want to. So what I did was I painted it with glazing liquid stuff, golden glazing liquid with some burnt umber. Really, really heavy on the glazing liquid, very light on the burnt umber. So it's almost a golden color rather than, than a dark brown. So I put that on there and then very quickly used a silicone brush to draw stripes in it. Um, I'm not entirely sure it worked. From a distance it works really well because it gives it a texture. And because there's so much texture that I put on the face, I really felt that it needed something on those antlers too. But the stripes on a real antler are parallel, <laughs> you know, and they'll go in a particular direction. And it was pretty hard to control that brush, so mine kind of cross over and it's a little bit sloppy. If you can think of a better way to do it, be sure and let me know, put a, put a comment down below. Now I did also use that same mixture of burnt umber and the glazing liquid to completely cover all of the fur except for the white parts too. Just to kind of blend in all those different colors just a little bit better because I got kind of carried away with, with the fur. I just finished them yesterday. I haven't had a chance to put on a, a coat of matte acrylic varnish, but as soon as I do, I already rearranged things up here. So he's got a spot up there on the wall. Uh, and I, I still haven't decided if I'm gonna make another one, uh, either bronze or white and put it out in my living room. But if I make a white one, I'm not gonna show you because you already know how to use spray paint. <laughs> 
but if I if I get talked into making one in bronze then I will definitely make another video so if you want to see that uh, be sure and put a comment down below now if you would like to use this pattern like I said you can find it on my website there's a small charge for it you can see it at ultimatepapermache.com DIY deer head so go ahead and, and check that out I'm also put, going to put some links here for the paper mache clay recipe if you haven't seen that and the video on how to make paper mache clay dr smooth without sanding it. So go ahead and check those out too. Then go make something and come back and see me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.